Hi everybody, index numbers are used a lot in economics, whether it's for GDP data, house prices, productivity, exchange rates, inflation, we like to use index numbers a lot. Why and how can we actually get index numbers? This video is going to look at that. Well, let's look at two reasons why we like index numbers in economics. In economics, there are a heck of a lot of ugly numbers. Look at GDP. GDP could be 12 numbers long, you know, add decimal places even longer than that. That is a horribly ugly number. So yeah, to make ugly numbers less ugly, you can simplify it like that. There are so many ugly numbers. Just like this number here, 249350.9, what a horrible number that is. If that's house price, average house prices in a year, that's a horrible number to look at. If instead of saying that, we could just say, well, that number is 100, then my God, life is much easier, much nicer to look at 100 than this horrible number. And the second reason why is because in economics, we like to do things with data, don't we? We like to analyze data. We like to make comparisons between data. Well, index numbers can allow for quick and easy comparisons. So we can see whether numbers are rising or numbers are falling. That's very important. And if we're looking at very large numbers, even something as simple as that can be very difficult to do. With index numbers, much easier to look at that. But also in economics, we like to look at rates of change. Normally annual rates of change, right? So the annual rate of growth, the annual rate of inflation, the annual rate of growth of house prices, the annual rate of growth of productivity. We like to look at rates of change a lot. Percentage changes. Index numbers can make it very easy to calculate percentage changes as well. So let's see how we can do both of those things. Looking at a random example I've picked on the right hand side here. We're looking at house price data in the UK. There are three years, year one, year two and year three. And each figure here represents the average house price in the UK in that year. What we want to do is to convert these ugly raw numbers in green into index numbers. Well, how do we do that? The first thing we do whenever we want to make an index is we have to pick a base year. We have to pick a base year. And it doesn't matter what year we pick. We can pick any year, we just have to call it the base year. I've said that year one here is going to be our base year. And base years always have an index value of 100. Why? Well, we can understand that using our equation of how to convert a raw number to an index number, an equation you have to know here. Well, how do we do it? Well, we take the raw number that we want to convert and we divide it by the raw number in the base year and then we multiply by 100. So let's take year one, our base year. Why do base years always have an index value of 100? Well, the raw number is that in the base year. Divide by the base year raw value is going to be exactly the same number. So it's going to be that divided by itself, which is 1, multiplied by 100 is going to be 100. So the base year always has an index value of 100. Sometimes you're told the base year, in which case your life is easy. Sometimes you're not. You have to work out from the, the number 100 that that year is the base year. But then using this equation, we can convert year two and year three raw numbers into index numbers. How do we do that? Well, let's take year two. So the raw number we want to convert is 255550.9. Divide by the base year raw number, which is this number, 249350.9. Multiply by 100 and to two decimal places, you will get the number 102.49. That's the index number in year two. Do the same thing for year three. So we take this number, we divide it by that number, and we multiply by 100 and to two decimal places, you'll get 104.65. So that's stage one done. We can convert ugly raw numbers into much nicer numbers to look at right here in black. These are our index numbers. But as we say, we like to make comparisons between data and often it's rates of change. So we can actually look at percentage changes between these numbers. More simply, we could look at whether the numbers are rising. And very simply from these numbers, we can see that average house prices are increasing year on year. Now, we can maybe see that easily from the green, but with some numbers in economics, horrible numbers, it might be difficult to even do that. So yeah, we can see that house prices are rising, just looking at the black numbers, very, very simple to see. But for percentage change, we can do a very simple calculation using index numbers too. Remember your equation though, to get a percentage change. To work out a percentage change, it's always the difference between two numbers, divide by the original number, the starting number, and then multiply by 100. So we wanna look at the percentage change the rate of change of house prices in year two, we can see that that number is 2.49%. How do we do that? Well, we take the difference between two numbers, so the difference between 1 or 2.49 and 100, that's clearly 2.49, divide by the starting number, which was 100, and then multiply by 100, and we're gonna get 2.49 as a percentage change. Now, maybe that one you could just see, obviously, from 100, it's just 2.49%, but then 
between these two numbers, apply the same formula, the difference between the two, divided by one or 2.49, times by 100, you get 2.11%. So it makes our life much easier when we're computing much easier numbers than these horrible numbers, which can be very long-winded. So there you go, that's how we use index numbers. That's why they're very, very useful in economics. Uh, if you practice this very well, you'll realize how simple this is. Hopefully now that clears up a lot of confusion that's out there with index numbers. Keep it simple and you'll master it. Very important in economics. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you all in the next video. Mm -hmm.